But I'm curious, you know, what is your view on how money plays a part or should it not play a part in this whole psychedelic renaissance? Um, because money, of course, becomes this big argumentative place, you know, like, oh, the, all these bad companies, but then people need healing or maybe people don't need healing or uh -huh. how do you make it accessible? Yeah. So there's a lot of issues here. One of, uh -huh. one of them is here's the system as we know it and how do we interface with that system, practically speaking, and not try to be so pure that we end up not being able to do anything at all. Like you could apply that same thinking to lots of issues like, well, you know, fossil fuel combustion is killing the planet. So, um, but are you going to live with zero, like go off in the woods and live off grid and like not, uh, if, even if you can do that, is that the best thing for the planet? So that issue comes up, but but really, like there's the core of the critique is a um, a very legitimate disturbance at the reduction of the sacred. Anytime something sacred is wrapped into the money world, bad things happen. It ends up getting desecrated. So. I personally like to use gift economics in my work when anything sacred is involved. I don't insist on it, but it is a viable business model. And it doesn't mean no money is involved. But here's, I have some friends who are um, setting up a psychedelic retreat center. And and I said, okay, here's how it should work. All right, just just, a modest proposal. You charge for accommodations and food at the center, but the medicine is by gift. So somebody will pay for room and board, and then they decide what they would like to pay as a gift in gratitude for the medicine itself and for the time of the people serving the medicine. And it comes from a place of, wow, thank you so much for doing this work. I would like to support you in doing that work. So in that way, the medicine itself is not being bought and sold. But it is appreciated. And those who are serving the medicine are supported. Not because they're like, well, if you don't give me that, I'm not going to give to you. It's not from an energy of withholding. But it's from an energy of trust. I trust that if I give this to you, that you or somebody else will support me in turn because my contribution is recognized by the universe. Beings are always watching me. And if I am sincere in my gift, then the flow to receive is also open. And I have to receive that too. And I'm willing to receive that. So it's not like, ooh, I'm not gonna touch money. It is, it is I trust and accept the inflow and the outflow. So this is, you know, I've used this model for retreats. I haven't been serving psychedelics, but you know, I've been serving whatever medicine I carry through my words and I do it that way. Like I used to teach at Esalen before, you know, I was, um, uh, I don't think I'm welcome there anymore for various reasons, but mm -hmm. having to do with um, World. my opinions on yeah. COVID issues. <laughs> However, when, when I was teaching there, um, I made an arrangement with the institution that the normal faculty payment wouldn't, that would be taken off the um, participants bill. So they would only be paying for ESSEL in itself, not for the program. And then they would choose how much to give me. And that meant that like some young person without a lot of money, you know, or some, you know, like they wouldn't have to give anything and that would be welcome. And then if somebody was more established later in life, had had more financial wealth, then they could give me an amount that expressed their gratitude. And if they weren't grateful at all, 
and were like, Charles, this kind of sucked. I wasted five days. Then I didn't want them to give from that energy. Mm-hmm. And that, that rarely happened. But, but, you know, like it's not for everybody, you know. So, so this is the principle of gift that, mm-hmm. that people just have to understand. It's not like when I, when I talk to people about this and suggest it for their business, they're like, oh, well, that might be fine for you, but I have to, I have a mortgage to pay. I have to make money. And I'm like, you don't understand. People want to support you. They want to show their gratitude. You will be supported and not just in intangible things. People will give you money. If you are doing good work in the world, they will be grateful. They will want to support you. Mm-hmm. And because psychedelics are so sacred, I think that, that this is a prime arena to use gift economics. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, some practitioners are out there listening and we'll give it a try. And it's, you know, I'll just also say like to make it work, often there's a lot of inner work that has to happen because you'll get confronted by, well, so-and-so, I know that they're wealthy and they didn't give very much. And, and, And okay, so are you actually doing it? Are you actually in gift? Mm -hmm. Or maybe, yeah, like all kinds of resentment comes up, uh, all kinds of fear comes up, control comes up. Let me kind of guilt them into it. (laughs) You don't have to do that. And the more you let go of that, any kind of control, and the more you trust generosity and gratitude, the more you animate generosity and gratitude. Mm -hmm. When you stand in that reality, you become an attractor for that reality. And this, uh, you don't have to go into like magical new age, you know, uh, the secret law of attraction stuff to believe that. Yeah. People can sense if you're trying to milk them for money. Mm-hmm. People can sense when you say, trust yourself. Any amount is welcome. Choose what feels good and right for you. We're good. Like people sense that. And again, like it doesn't always work. And in fact, I can guarantee you that there will be a moment where it looks like it doesn't work because that's you're being asked, are you serious about this? (laughs) And also maybe you're being shown ways in which you're not actually doing what you think, what you tell yourself you're doing. But I just want to tell everybody this is a viable business model. And it is the business model of the future as more and more of materiality enters the realm of the sacred Mm -hmm. in our perception. Not that it isn't all already sacred, but in our present historical moment, we tend to divide the world into two, the sacred and the profane. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we treat the world as profane, the material world. No wonder this is part of the old story. No wonder we're trashing nature. Mm-hmm. If we see matter as just matter. So really, this business model is tied into the perception of the sacred. Mm-hmm. And as we step more and more into the sacred and into seeing our work and our labor and all materials as sacred, the gift model then becomes more and more natural. And that's why I say it is the future of mm-hmm. economics. Mm-hmm.